Welcome to Ghostly. Rebecca, how have you been? I've been good, Pat. How about you? I've been really good. Uh, These are some crazy times we're having with the weather and everything. I mean, it was snowing in Colorado in May. Uh, there, it's been like a monsoon here in Chicago. Everyday rain. Yeah, this is just insane. Yeah. And um, it it feels like we just were recording Ghostly the other day. Yeah. Maybe that's why it's raining so much. Because of Ghostly. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> me being the skeptic, I'm going to say no to that probably. <laughs> no, but we were just recording Ghostly the other day because we put out our bonus episode. We did. It was fun. It just was doing a lot of fun. It was. Yeah. Even though it turned into a debate that I wasn't expecting. So. Well, we have to debate some. <laughs> we have to debate facts now even. <laughs> so we've had an amazing month here at Ghostly. Uh, we mentioned in the bonus episode that we reached over 2,000 Facebook likes. Well, we hit an amazing milestone since then, too. We took a look at our stats for this month's Ghostly's downloads, and we reached over 11,000 downloads for the month of May alone. Unbelievable. Yeah, that is just so amazing. Yeah, and and seven months. Not even seven months. Yeah, and you know what it is? Well, it wasn't seven months that it took us to get 10,000 downloads. Oh, that's right. Just this month. What am I talking about? Yes, we have far more than that. Oh, it's so crazy. Yeah. I. You know what it is, though? It's that people have been telling their friends to listen to it. Yes. We appreciate that so we much. Do. Word of mouth is our best way of growing, yeah, right? It, and it's how you can debate with your friends. It blows my mind that so many people are letting other people know about Ghostly, and we really, really appreciate it. We can't thank you enough. No, definitely not. And we have a great episode for you today. I really think we should just dive right into the polls. Yes. So, Rebecca, what are the numbers for the HH Holmes episode? It's just like a pulling off a Band-Aid for you, huh? <laughs> it is. Yeah, just <laughs> let's get it done. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> T, we had 85% of people voting say yes, of course, HH Holmes uh, and his victims haunt to this earth. Uh, 15% say no. Bad guy, but no ghost. So, I think we won. This one, the, the the believers, yeah, came out in force. Well, yeah, definitely. Hashtag Team Skeptic got crushed. Uh, I do believe that you guys brought a lot of great evidence, and I'm very happy that we got to tell the story of Holmes. It was a lot of fun talking about something that I've been learning about for 20 plus years now. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And it was great having Mondo on our HH Holmes oh, episode. I love, I love having Mondo on here. He helps keep us honest. <laughs> well, I'm always honest. I don't know about you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so this episode is on Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Waverly Hills, that's not where you want to be. Thanks, oh, Mondo. Was that the ghost of Mondo? That is that is the ghost of Mondo. <laughs> the ghost of Mondo's voice. <laughs> but seriously, no, thanks, Mondo, because for the past two weeks, every time we say Waverly Hills, that is what I hear in my head. Waverly Hills, that's not where you want to be. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all I hear. <laughs> <laughs> so I have really enjoyed doing research for this episode, and it's all thanks to our friend and a listener, Mike Morrissey. He was the one that tipped us off to how haunted this place is. Yeah. Oh, can I just say one yeah, thing absolutely. really quick? Is it... it What's amazing, you know, he talked to us about it and it sounded great. And then once I started researching it and once we actually kind of put it out a little bit on Facebook that we were doing this episode, I was shocked at how haunted this place is, how popular it is. It This is this is this is going to be a ghostly, ghostly episode. Yeah. This is one of the most haunted locations in the world. Yeah. It's crazy. Just like Batcher's Grove, I believe, is one of the most haunted locations in the world. This is another one. Yeah. This, This one's big. Uh, So I'm going to play for you the parts of the interview that I did with with Mike. Uh, Rebecca wasn't there at that time, I think, because she was too scared. (laughs) I was busy doing (laughs) things. Yeah. Well, it was a while ago that I talked to Mike, um, but we had so many other episodes that we had to do before bringing you this episode. So you might remember some of his interview as I used it in episode six for Shadow People. 
Yeah. And just so you know, too, because a lot of you give us suggestions and we want you to know we definitely hear them and we want to get them in the schedule if we can. It's just sometimes it takes longer than we'd like, but yeah, well, we get there. Yeah. We have some huge episodes planned for you guys, uh, especially the next one, too. And I can't wait to tell you guys about it at the very end of the podcast. So you have to listen. Yes. So, okay, here you go. Here is Mike's interview with me. Mike Morrissey. All right. And um, so you have a couple ghost stories to tell us. Yes, I do. Uh, I've been, I guess you could call me an amateur uh, ghost enthusiast uh, for a couple years now, but uh, I'm, I'm the type of guy that will go out of my way to, uh, to find them and see them. And uh, I was once a skeptic, just like you, Pat, but uh, <laughs> I always say seeing is believing. Definitely. And I think I've seen enough. I've seen enough to uh, call myself a believer. So, Definitely. Um, I mean, my, my, first... my thing is I, I want to believe. I want there to be proof that, that makes me have to change my mind. I just sure. haven't seen it yeah. yet. Well, if you were ever to go to these places that I'm going to tell you about, uh, you just might be, you just might see one, man. Oh, awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. So um, we're all familiar with the TV show Ghost Adventures with oh, yeah. uh, Zach, Zach and his crew. Yeah, I've been to a couple of the places that have been on his show, okay. uh, two of which are in, in Kentucky. And the first one was uh, the Waverly Hill Sanitarium in Louisville. Uh, Louisville, great city, a lot of cool history there. But the Waverly Hill Sanitarium is totally legit. Um, I've heard some people say it's like, in the top 25 most haunted places on the planet. I'd probably agree with that. Um, for those that don't know, and you can go to their website, it's the real Waverly Hills.com. Okay. But for those that don't know, I'll give you a brief history of the place. It was a tuberculosis hospital in the twenties. And, uh, I think they closed up in maybe the eighties, but they say over that time, over 60,000 people died in this building. Wow. So that's a lot of death. I yeah. mean, I don't know. I don't know if that number is accurate, but uh, but even if it's half of that, from, I mean that's that's an right. incredible number. Oh yeah, uh, the history of this building is insane. They did like um, they tested different things there, like uh, kind of morbid stuff. They would take just you know trying to cure this disease of tuberculosis. They were doing experiments. They were like they would cut people open, remove their bones uh, remove their lungs and then put them back uh, in and sew them up mm. and that just you know that that just made things worse uh it, for the windows there was no glass it was open so during winter they thought all oh, the cold winter air will help these people's lungs all these people <laughs> froze to death <laughs> wow uh, so it's five floors and they say the fourth floor is like the most haunted uh there's a story of a, a nurse who hung herself this and that but um I guess, you know, over the years it was vandalized and, uh, just abandoned. And then Mm -hmm. I think a couple in the late nineties bought it and they still, they still own it today. Uh, they kind of fixed it up, but there's, there's no running electricity in the building at all. So there's no way of like, uh, there's no way of doing like, say like a hologram or to project something on a wall. Um, the place has always had like the, the myth the urban legend of it. Oh, it's haunted. So they started doing tours figuring, Oh, we can, uh, you know, make money off of this. And, uh, I've been there twice. Mm. The first time I, I walked in as a skeptic and definitely walked out a believer because I saw shadow people. That is like the only way I can describe it. You look at your shadow on the wall or on the floor and uh-huh. you know, you know what, it, you know what it looks like, but sure. when this thing is like standing, uh, right next to you or like a little bit, a couple feet away from you. It's like, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, like the first time I was there and I seen them, there was, you know, tall ones, short ones, all, uh, peeking around corners and like just moving real fast. It, I wasn't scared. Uh-huh. I just felt very, it was, it was a strange feeling. I felt very like conscious, alert and awake, like, okay, the sky is blue the grass is green and there's a ghost standing right there. Wow. <laughs> that's that's wow. how I felt, man. That's the best way I can describe it. What time of day was this? Uh, that, uh, was they, it, they was only it like do, 
was it like a time where you would actually see shadows or was this at like night when you wouldn't see them? It was at night. Um, oh, wow. Their public tours, their public tours are only at night. Okay. And, uh, you pay like 20 bucks and you go for two hours and they give you a little history of the place. And then it's about an hour and a half tour. The group, the tour groups are not too big, no more than maybe 12, 15 people. The tour guides are very knowledgeable about the place and, they they will they'll all tell you the same thing like they've been bitten scratched kicked pushed oh, hair's man. been pulled uh, clothes have been you know pulled at this and that and um, I mean if you do any type of Google search or go to go to their website of the real Waverly Hills dot com you'll see uh, you know crazy pictures videos YouTube's got a ton of videos wow um, and the history of the place is really interesting like the first ever use of headphones was designed and created for Waverly Hills. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Because there was so much coughing uh, that nobody could hear anything? Well, people <laughs> were just isolated in their rooms yeah, and they true. couldn't move. So they had to want, they wanted to listen to some radio stations and they invented the headphones for that place. Yeah, TB is a horrible disease. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't even know if it's been like squashed out or, or what no uh, there's like a polio, I guess. there's a new form of it now and uh the new form is not as deadly i mean because we have antibiotics and stuff like that that can treat it but um definitely the, there you know it's morphed into a different different form now mm -hmm. yeah oh my god yeah so that was the first but time you is, went uh, did you that was the first time i went okay what about the second time uh the second time uh, we did, it was pretty much the same tour and I kind of knew what to expect. So my, I went in there like, okay, it's like any haunted location. If you go in there thinking, oh, for sure, I'm going to see something, you're going to be let down and disappointed. Yeah. So I, I just kind of played it off like, okay, I'm probably not going to see anything this time. And I was wrong. I saw him again. Wow. Uh, this time on the tour, we went into the body shoot, which is like. A 500 foot tunnel they would uh there's a ramp in there and what they would do is when someone died they would uh take the body like uh on a stretcher put it on in the body chute and then 500 feet downhill is where the hearse would be and they would you know catch the body and then take it away wow. but the body chute has a lot of history of you know hauntings this and that of course gravity uh you know has a play in it but like when you go down you feel like you're being pushed down, like someone's actually pushing on your back. As you go back up, it feels like someone's pulling you back. Yeah. Um, that I kind of felt a little bit. And uh, the classic, like, you know, uh, you feel cold spots when a spirit is near. Yeah, you definitely do. Because I, I, the two times I've been there, it was uh, like right in the middle of summer, very hot. And uh, you feel this like brush of cold air. It's like, oh, where the hell did that come from? And it stays. It like it does. It lingers, and then maybe if you move away, it goes away. But uh, it, the place has cold spots. Wow. And uh, yeah, that was uh, my first real experience with like paranormal and like proof. I mean, I I'm telling you right now, Pat. I have no reason to lie. I'm not trying to impress anybody. Uh, I'm being honest. I I know what I saw. Yeah. And you know how they say the the eyes tell the mind what, what it wants to see. Sure. That's yeah. true. That's true. But, uh, I know what I saw for sure. And, uh, that place is legit. Yeah. I find it interesting that you, uh, saw these shadow people in two different locations too. Uh, well, yeah, that's the thing. Each, each floor of this place has, uh, a different story about it, but that fourth floor is, uh, well, I saw it the two times I was there, the fourth floor is where I've seen the, okay. the shadow people. But in different rooms? Uh, yeah, uh, hallways and corridors. Like, yeah. uh, oh, one thing, one part was really cool. The second time I went, like I said, there's no um, electricity running in this building. So mm -hmm. there can't be like a hologram or anything sure. like that. The tour guide says, uh, okay, anybody want to volunteer to walk down this hallway? Ugh. and uh, the one guy raised his hand. He's like, okay. So he, goes, he walks down there. He waits maybe like a minute, and he says, okay, slowly turn around and, and come on back. So as the guy's walking back, 
I swear, I saw two pairs of legs walking with him, like on his left and right, just legs, like waist down, no torso. Wow. These legs were walking with him. And then when he got closer to us, they, of course, they just disappeared in thin air. Wow. That's what I see. I, I don't know what uh, anybody else in the group seen, but that's, that's what I think. That's like a weird and ZZ only- Top video or something. <laughs> He's got <laughs> legs. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, the, you know, so there's no electricity. There's no lights in, on in the building. The only light is from the moon coming from the windows. Yeah. And uh, there were shadows of, of legs walking with this guy. It was, wow. It was kind of neat. Wow. That's something. Yeah, the place is, is it's it's definitely worth a road trip. Yeah, from Chicago, where we're at, it's like a four and a half hour drive to Louisville. It's it's a fun time, good city, a lot of cool places to to hang out, eat and drink. And well, if you're there in Louisville, you you got to stop at the Waverly Hills. Oh yeah, but I drive like a granny, so that would probably take me about seven <laughs> hours to get there. Then, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, step on the gas. <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so that was my interview with Mike Morrissey. Wow, good job. Yeah, Uh, and I think I was a little bit more nasally then. Okay, I don't know. Hearing my voice like that, I don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, That that was done over Skype, so the audio quality might not have been the best, and I apologize for that. So Mike is so awesome, and he's a super intelligent guy, Uh, I really enjoy talking to him about ghost stories. And I'd like to also say that he came out with us to Batcher's Grove when we did our first Batcher's Grove episode. And as I said, Batcher's Grove is another place that's supposed to be one of the most haunted locations on Earth. And Mike confessed to me that he had never seen anything there. But yet he strongly believes he saw something at Waverly Hills. That gives him some credibility. I would say some, yeah. I I don't know how I'm going to do this episode. <laughs> so Mike gave me gave us a brief part of the history, and I'd like to elaborate a little bit about that. Um, talk about some parts that he didn't mention, and maybe clarify some parts that he did say. So he did say that Waverly Hills is located in uh, southwestern Louisville, Kentucky. The land that it's on was purchased by Major Thomas Hercules Hayes. Oh, that's a good name. Yeah, that was in 1883. Did you know that Elton John's middle name is Hercules? No. Yeah, his middle name is Hercules. His made-up name, Elton oh, John. Oh, yeah. oh, I see. Okay, so he gave himself I'm not name. a big Elton John fanatic. I just want you guys to know I appreciate his music, <laughs> but I don't know how I know that. Well, that's great, though. I love Google. it. Google. <laughs> Way to give yourself some you know, power. Right? Me, right? That no, I that El- I know his middle name is Elton Hercules. John. Oh, okay, Elton John. Yeah, Elton, if you're listening, um, you can come on the show at any time to talk <laughs> about your middle name. So, Major Thomas Hercule Hayes was a veteran of the Civil War, although he was a Confederate uh, major. Okay, all right. It was located far away from any school, Waverly Hills. That is. And Mr. Hayes had daughters, or Major Hayes had daughters, that he wanted to attend school. So he built a schoolhouse, and he named it Waverly School based on the teacher that he hired, Lizzie Lee Harris. And she had a fondness for Walter Scott's Waverly novels. Wow, that's complicated. Yeah, and Waverly is spelled differently, too, then. Okay, gotcha. But I like that he's like, okay, so I'm living here. I like where I live. I want my daughters to go to school. Yes. That's awesome. Number yeah. one, right? 1800s. Uh, and so he's like, I'm just, I'm going to build a school. And just hire a teacher. And just hire a teacher. And then um, a t- that teacher's f- favorite novelist. Yep. Done. Name yeah. of the school. And you know what? Major Hayes liked it so much um, because it sounded peaceful. So he named his whole prop, his whole property Waverly Hills. Cool. Yeah. Uh, The area around Ohio River was considered wetlands, and it was a perfect condition for tuberculosis bacteria. Oh. Yeah, not so cool. Um, Major Hayes had a Chicagoland connection, too, as he owned large shares of the Pullman Railroad stocks, 
And we'll have to do an episode on Pullman one of these days as his history is very interesting too. And I'm sure there's some ghostly stuff about Pullman. Mm, Okay, we'll have to, yeah, they might have haunted him. We'll see. Spoiler alert, Pullman, not the greatest guy. No. Uh, He also worked for the Pullman company. So yeah, we definitely have a Chicago connection with Waverly Hills. Yeah, it, it, when you live in Chicago, you gotta always have the Chicago connection to yeah, every right? story. It's Chicago. Huh? It's, it's how we do things here. In 1908, Major Hayes sold Waverly Hills to the Tuberculosis Board because he was getting older and his kids were already grown up, and there there wasn't much farming actually done on his land, so it made sense for him to sell it. Like, yep, built a school, educated my kids. Now it's time to move on. Now it's time to move on. Speaking of moving on, Major Hayes passed away on November 9th, 1909, about a year after he sold Beverly Hills. And he was at the the ripe old age back then of 72 years old. He died of complications associated with pneumonia, so he didn't die of tuberculosis. No. I was hoping for that connection to make it all (laughs) make sense. Yeah, sadly, something that still happens. Yeah, he is buried at the Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville. So, Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Uh, and we we talked about sanitarium and sanatorium. Uh, well, I think we did being, b- being before synonymous. the ep- yeah. Uh, episode. Yeah, so, there, if we, so if I think Mike said sanitarium. You said sanatorium. They're the same, at least according to the internet. Yeah. So... Uh, It officially opened in 1910 and began taking tuberculosis patients. They kept the name, but not necessarily the spelling, although it kept going back and forth. Mm. Waverly to Waverly. It's just different spelling. They just took out a letter. Yeah. There has been reported, uh, Mike said, 60,000 deaths. He's almost there. 63,000 deaths at Waverly Hills. Okay, when I heard that interview, I was like, no way. Tuberculosis was a big killer, especially in, especially in the United States. It was considered the white plague. Wow. Now, well, what was interesting, because when I was doing my history, again, mine was mostly fo- focused on the ghost part, but they were saying that actually the majority of patients lived. It was like a per, just a, a, a percentage that died. But the, So then think about how many patients there must have been yeah. if 63,000 died. I mean, that's... Yeah, and they kept That's building onto the hospital too. So it it got bigger and bigger before before it ended. Wow. So uh, Mike was a little bit off on when the hospital closed, although he's right about something else when he said the uh, 1980s. The hospital closed in 1961, though, because they lowered the need for such a hospital by coming out with streptomycin in 1943. That's an antibiotic that's highly effective against tuberculosis. Yep. He was right, though, too, about some of those crazy treatments that they did, Yes. Though. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, really I'm not even going to touch stuff. those things because he's totally right about those yeah. things. Uh, the building reopened in 1962 as Woodhaven Geriatric Center. It's a nursing home that mainly treated aging patients with uh, dementia as well as uh, severely mentally handicapped people. This is kind of ironic, though, as Major Hayes was known to not like old people. Even though he was 72 when he died, he used to hang out with the youngins and never people of his own age. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. But it's interesting that it became a nursing home. Yeah, I guess that's true. (laughs) So this nursing home, probably not on the up and up because there were reports of patient neglect because it was severely understaffed and was closed by the state in 1982. Oh, gotcha. Oh, I also had read that they did like shock treatment there and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I'm sure they did. Yeah, Yeah. just, yeah. So there was a plan to turn it into a prison and also a plan to turn it into a, um, they wanted to build the largest statue of Jesus on that. Oh, I did see something about that. Yeah, Yeah. like like with Rio. Like the, yeah, uh, yeah. It Brazil. was it was modeled after the uh, Rio Rio de Janeiro um, Jesus. Yeah, and um, but it was going to be bigger. Okay. So they were going to set the record for the biggest Jesus. Mm, but they didn't do it. But none of this stuff actually happened. Gotcha. So the tunnel that Mike speaks of was actually an entrance and an exit for workers at first, but then as they were going along treating people for tuberculosis, they realized that. Um, it would probably 
make people lose all hope if they saw all these bodies being transported out. Mm. So they decided to use it as a transportation for bodies as well. Wow. So you could be going to work and they're taking a body out. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm sure that happened often. Yeah. Yeah. In 2001, Waverly Hills was sold to Tina and Charlie Mattingly. And they hold tours of Waverly Hills and host a haunted house each year on the site. All proceeds of the haunted house go to the restoration of Waverly Hills. Wow. Yeah. Waverly Hills. Who would have thought? Yeah. Waverly Hills. That's not where you want to be. Thank you, Mondo. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I have to continue the history that... Mike already laid down for us. He did an awesome job. I don't even think he had notes. I think this was all just him talking out of his memory. Yeah, he did great. He yeah. did great. He yeah. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. So do you think we should take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. That was a lot of information. Okay, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with the ghost story. Hey, Rebecca, guess what? What's that? Well, you know how we want Ghostly to not only tell and debate great stories, but also to give back to those in need? We do. Yeah, well, I've discovered this new app called PodCoin that lets you donate to charities with a currency you earn just for listening to our podcast or any podcast. That's awesome. On PodCoin, you earn their digital currency, PodCoin, just for listening to podcasts. That sounds easy. It is. You can then donate your PodCoin to charities who will get real money donations. And you can also choose to save your PodCoin over time and exchange it for other rewards like Amazon and Starbucks. That's great. Who doesn't like Starbucks? Um, I hope no one. Yeah. Because I love Starbucks. Yeah, they'll give you um, gift cards right cool. there. And you could donate those gift cards too. You could, yeah. So download PodCoin in the App Store or in Google Play and use our special code GHOSTLY to receive 300 PodCoins just for checking it out. Awesome. All right, we're back. So Rebecca, you ready for your ghost story? I am. You know, I just want to say before you get into the ghost story that they tried a lot of different methods to treat tuberculosis. And the ironic thing is, is that they came up with a method that was either a pill form or an IV form to treat it when they didn't have to do all these crazy things that they did. Oh, well, I mean, I guess that's the the medical history, right? (laughs) We, We try lots of crazy things before we figure out the actual thing. And it's usually a very humane way of ending something. Yeah. Yeah. It was they yeah. A lot of people went through a lot of a lot of treatment for a long time. I'm I'm actually reading a book right now about the Holocaust and a Holocaust survivor and she talks a lot about tuberculosis and oh, yeah. um after the war, people having to go to places just like this. It was kinda of, it when my it's really weird when it's like I'm researching one mm-hmm. thing that <laughs> and something comes up and then I'm reading something else and some and a very similar thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. Anyways, so it's all right. Like when you hear that word, and then all of a sudden you start hearing it everywhere. And tuberculosis. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, Rebecca. Okay. Let's hear that ghost story. That's time for the ghost story. Uh, so this t- a little different today, uh, and I just wanted to say this is based on a story that I read. Okay. Uh, and I will uh, post the link to it out there. Um, in the show of, notes. Right? In the show notes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it is the story that someone has put out there um, to, to tell, but but I kind of re- rephrased it a little bit for us to help us get our, ourselves in the mood. Okay. Okay. Let's put us in the mood. You and your friends have decided to have some fun your senior year of high school. Do something daring as your last year together is ending, and everyone will be going off to do their own thing soon. So you decide to visit the local place everyone keeps telling you is haunted. Waverly Hills Sanitarium. The journey to the building is actually almost as scary as the building itself because you decide to walk the death chute. This is the tunnel they used to take bodies out of when people died. It's dark and you have to feel your way up until you finally reach the building itself. You're already scared. Your friends are 
want to hang out on the roof. But after a short time on the roof, things start to get crazy. Shadows surround you and a feeling of dread so bad that your friend wants to jump off the roof to get away from it all. You manage to talk him down, but then comes the task of leaving. You can't just run because the building is so old and full of junk and it's dark. There's no light. So you just have to feel your way in the dark with just your flashlight. And you still see those shadows as you walk, pushing you forward. You hear noises, see toys moving. It is the single scariest experience of your life. Eventually you all make it out, but no one is the same after that. Wow. That's, that's pretty deep. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm, the, I, the, that, what struck me with that story was just this idea of that you're terrified, right? So, you know, you could just imagine a bunch of kids hanging out, they're terrified, and they see these shadows, and you want to just run out of the building, but you can't just run out of the building because yeah. it's dark and there's stuff everywhere. So you have to mm. walk slowly and carefully on your way out. That just sounds like a nightmare, you know, like that idea of like you can't run forward, you can't get out and the things are still chasing you and you just have to go slowly. Otherwise, you'll just run into things. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that's pretty intense. Uh huh. Yeah, I would hate to have that feeling. Yes. All right. So do we want to just move on to the debate? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So I'm going to try my best to get into to mention the different stories that Mike brings up and kind of bring them in context with some of the other uh, research that I found. And then I have a few other things to mention okay. you know, that are, are out there. I just want to say that I think Mike is an honest guy. Um, never known him to lie. He's, um, he's very trustworthy and very smart. So this is going to be a really hard one for me to debate any kind of skepticism on, on that side. Mm. So anything that I say is just my initial thoughts yeah. that I that I have based upon what Mike said and what it could be. I, I'm i not saying Mike's a liar because I really don't feel that he is. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, so Mike mentioned, like I said, several of the biggest stories. And one that he mentions just kind of briefly, he mentions that a nurse hung herself. Uh, this is room 502. So it's the fifth floor. And there are many people, if you, again, he mentioned you look online, you're going to see tons of stories, tons of videos. And this is one that shows up in a lot of places. There's actually two different stories that people will tell of women that have killed themselves in this particular room, mm -hmm. uh, hanging themselves or jumping out the window. There's different reasons people will give as to why. Uh, but at, all of the sources will say, though, there is no documentation. Yeah, I did not find any documentation of a nurse killing herself. Yeah. Uh, I saw stories based upon it, but they seem to be more speculation. Mm -hmm. I think it's yeah. that for me, and then you can say what you think too, is for me, I feel like there maybe is a, um, a female presence, a female ghost that is in this area. Um, but I don't think that we know who it is exactly or how they died because there are all these conflicting stories. I mean, of course, I'm going to say that I, I don't necessarily believe that it's a female ghost, but I could understand, you know, that we attribute this to a female presence. You know, it might feel more feminine than than masculine. Mm. But I don't know if I could attribute that to a ghost per se because i'm still on the fence about the ghost idea gotcha well i mean it is a nur it is a nurse's uh, station i believe yeah. this room okay. so you so can that would make sense that would make sense then yeah mm -hmm. okay so then uh mike mentioned seeing shadow people yes at night on the fourth floor um and then i just i thought i'd kind of put in there too the guy who he said the tour guide had him like go forward and then walk back but and then he, he mike saw legs yeah. On either side of him. And then I just wanted to add in here, there's uh, Troy Taylor, who is a big Chicago area ghost researcher. And we actually mentioned him in our fir very first episode on Resurrection oh, Mary. Okay. He wrote the book that as, was a whole thing on Resurrection Mary. Yeah. Um, 
And prairieghost.com is his website. And he has a whole story. I mean, I couldn't even begin to give it justice on this podcast of uh, being on the fourth floor, getting a private tour and mm. seeing a man walk by a, a shadow man. So I thought, you know, Mike isn't the only one that tells these stories. There's a whole lot of stories out there. And this kind of famous ghost guy is another one that tells a story of seeing a, a ghost man or shadows, uh, also seeing shadows, uh, especially on the fourth floor. So, we, you know, as you mentioned, we, we had the Shadow People episode. Yeah, episode six. Yeah, and um, this is one where um, it seems more like it's ghosts rather than something else. Um, you know, we mentioned the Shadow People episode. The shadows could be, or people will say they could be aliens or, or something time from another dimension. Right. Yeah. But I, this seems to be more like people are um, feeling like it's actual people. So okay. it's the ghosts, but they're seeing them as shadows. Okay. So what do you think? Well, um, as I said, I, I believe Mike did see something. I believe that he saw some shadows, but I just want to say that I, one thing that he said to me that was, that kind of, kind of caught my attention was that they only offer tours of this place at night mm-hmm. and there's no electricity. Yes. So, said that a couple times. yeah. So, my thought is, why would they do something like this? Why would they only offer it at night with no electricity? Maybe during the day you wouldn't see things like that. Mm. And, and maybe it just kind of sets up that spookiness element that they're, that they're looking for. I don't think it's that people just want to work at night. I think it has to do with that they're setting the stage for something. And also, I, I always am a little bit weary when it comes to people making money off of these kind of things. Also, if this had been something real, then why isn't our government looking into it? Why isn't this becoming a bigger thing? Well, I guess we could say that about a lot of things. I think a lot of conspiracy theorists would say that we don't know that the government isn't looking into these things. Well, I'm just saying if it was real, I I believe that there would be a lot more attention to this by a lot more people that could use it in their in their favor. Mm. I mean, think about it. If there was really shadow people, you could sick these shadow people after another military and scare them, spook them. Maybe. That maybe. Would, if you could control them. Or maybe you could set it up where they have to go through Waverly Hills. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just, to me, it's it. there's so many reports. I mean, we'll, we'll get into this in our fight, you know, uh, at the end. But yeah, it seems yeah. like there's a lot of... A lot of stories about, out there on this. Well, that's just my thoughts is that yeah. they set it up at night where the moon is coming in, where in my interview, I was a little bit confused. You see, you would see shadows more at night than you would during the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, it just kind of sets that up, right? Well, I don't know if it's during the day or at night, but I guess the difference... or he, So... The sun, ca- you know, is what helps cast a shadow. But, but the I get moon. the moon maybe could as well. I, but yeah. if you're in a dark area, I don't know if it would cast a shadow. Well, it was actually about one of the other things you're going to say, and maybe we could just talk about this right now. Then, sure. That I came up with this idea. Um, I watched that YouTube video that you sent me of the uh, kid or the the ball, right? Oh yeah. Well, this will just take two seconds. There's uh, people tell the story that there's a little boy that um, all of a sudden, like uh, uh, toys, balls will move. Yeah. Yeah. And that comes out of the darkness. It does come out of the dark. It is dark. Yeah. So I'm just thinking to myself, is that if this was during the day, maybe you would see somebody, you know, pitching a ball towards you or something. I, I don't know. Or maybe things would just seem more realistic to you than than it does at night. And that video just really made me think about that. So your evidence pointing to that there is some kind of thing there is actually what made me think, you know, maybe there isn't. And I, I really want to believe that there is something here because so many people have seen something. I just, I, I don't know. It's really difficult for me to believe that, though. 
I'm sensing a road trip in our future. Definitely. This is definitely a bucket list thing. Yeah, right. Well, we, because, oh, I, you know what? We forgot to mention our friend Rick, Rich Hunt. Yeah, be careful how you say that. <laughs> From the Toys Were Us. Rick Hunt. Rick, Rick, that Rich, sorry. Rick where my Hunt. brain is. Rick Hunt. Um, from Toys Were Us podcast. Yes. Uh, super fun podcast. Definitely not okay for kids, as we mentioned. Yeah. Um, but no, but super fun podcast. Uh, he commented when we posted we were going to do this episode that he also went to Waverly Hills and absolutely believes it's haunted. Believes it's haunted. Yeah. So it seems like maybe we, we're going to have to check it out. I just think, what about if you were to take a tour during the day? Do you think you would have the same experience as you would at night? Well, we could also take this back to Paranormal Illumination Society. Yeah. And how she told us that Holly told us that, you know, there's a lot of reasons to do these things at night. I think, you know, you bring up a good point that doing it at night kind of get puts us in the mood. Yeah. But, you know, she also mentions that there's a reason we do ghost hunt at night because it's quieter and it just is more likely that things happen. So I did eh, Yeah. Know. Okay. Well, I don't know. Let's move on to the next point then. Okay. So Mike mentions the feeling pressure on his back going down the body chute mm -hmm. and then feeling pressure or being pulled, actually, he says, what, pulling pulled back to the building Yeah. when uh, he's coming back up. I actually did not find any other stories of people saying that particular piece. Yeah. So I was curious what you thought about that. Um, I I don't really have anything I can say about it. I wasn't there. I didn't see what he what he saw. I didn't feel what he felt. So I I don't know. And when when we say shoot, I, when we say shoot, it makes me think something different than a tunnel. It makes me think like it's it's like a drop. Yeah, I think it is more of like a tunnel. I mean, I think it's pretty steep, but I do think it's a tunnel. Like yeah. The people can walk up. It's not like But a, a chute where you would drop things down, like a laundry chute or something right. like that, that would make a lot more sense that you would feel this kind of pressure. Mm. You know, maybe it's the wind working against you or gravity, you know. Mm. it's. Um, but I, I, I really can't say because I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. And as I said, I don't think Mike's a liar. So I believe he felt that. But does that mean that there's ghost there though mm. or could that be something else could that be some natural element that we're not we're not thinking of like i don't know if there's a lot of wind that comes in there i don't know he also mentioned the cold spots mm -hmm. and oh, yeah, yeah. in a place that has no electricity i wonder how their heating is and i wonder how their ventilation is in that place yeah well, I, I, we, yeah, the cold spot thing is always interesting when yeah. you feel it in one spot but not another. Uh, I was for the tunnel or the chute, whatever you want to call it. This is this is one that I'm maybe a little more skeptical on. Um, you know, I do think it's a spooky place. Um, I think that it would be very easy to, with the gravity, kind of feel like you're being pushed down. Yeah, and then. You know, that psychologically you're excited to get back. And so you kind of feel this pull of going there. But he was um, there twice, though. Yeah. So I don't know. That's this what was the really, second visit. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. It does make not you much I can him. say. Uh, you know, I'm going to say I believe him, but I don't know if that necessarily means it's ghosts that are doing it. Mm. Well, he also mentions that uh, the tour guides tell stories of being pinched and touched and pushed and hearing noises. Um, and I also read multiple stories of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would maybe put cold spots in kind of that area. You know, again, that's not localized to any one place within well, I'm, Waverly Hills. I, I want to separate those two, actually. Okay. Sure. That the tour guides are the ones that are claiming to have felt that they've been pushed, that they've been, that they've had their hair pulled, that they've been scratched, they've been bitten. Mm -hmm. Um. Tour guides get paid money to to present this story to you to make you believe. If you didn't believe, it would just be a historic uh, tour. And I, I mean, I would be interested in the historic tour of of Waverly Hills, but I don't think that they would get as many people coming to them as they do 
because of it being a ghost spot, you know, one of the most haunted spots, being on Ghost Adventurer. Mm. Uh, I, I don't think that they would get as much money if if they just were like, no, I mean, nothing's ever happened to us, but, you know, we find it spooky. <laughs> right? I mean, I I don't know. It's just the idea of people making money off of something like this. They're more inclined to fabricate stories or exaggerate stories. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I have a couple more. Okay. These are not Mike stories. Okay. So uh, we always have a woman in a white dress, right? Oh, no. Not another woman in white dress. No, no. I got in trouble the last time by the woman (laughs) in the white. (laughs) Now we have a man in a white coat. Oh, oh. So men can be in white as well. How do we know that this is really a man, though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think that the, the thought is that this is a, sh- a chef, I believe, oh. or is a cook of some sort, or a okay. dish boy, I don't know, something. A dish a boy. dishwasher, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, the, the Louisville Ghost Society mm-hmm. um, were the, some of the first people to start investigating this uh, sanitarium. And this was before the ghost tours and everything. They were kind of, or, or right around the start of it, but they were they were kind of the first people to really start going in there. And um, when they first went in, they heard, or heard, well, they did hear footsteps and the sounds of doors clo- opening and closing. But the weirdest thing was that they kept smelling baking bread. Mm. And they went um, into the kitchen <laughs> And there was nothing. They, not only was it, there was no, obviously nothing baking, um, but there was nothing that could possibly work in this kitchen. Like everything was just, you know, not working and, uh, you know, all like it had been neglected for, for a lot of years. Um, I couldn't find that they saw the man in the white coat, but other people have reported seeing the man in the white coat in the kitchen area and smelling food. So, man, what a nice ghostly experience right, though, right? i mean that didn't sound scary it sounded it sounds lovely right i'd love to smell baked, baked bread, bread in a place like exactly this. and like and here's the thing about it like i don't feel like you wouldn't go into something expecting that like mm-hmm. I, you know we talk you, you mentioned how you go in and you expect to see shadows you mike talks about that you know when you expect to see something yeah. Then that, you see something. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that you go into a place like this thinking like, I'm going to smell food being made. <laughs> ah. That is not something that's in your mind. And yet they all smelled it. And uh, and so so have others. So yeah. there you go. All right. So I do have something to say about this. And um, forgive me for the way that I'm going to go about talking about this. It's the only way that I really can because I have to set the mood for this. Okay. Ooh, set the mood. Yeah, so back when I was in my late teens, early 20s, I used to um I used to run a courier route for a hospital where I would have to go pick up specimens and drop off supplies and stuff to the clinics that they had. Okay. And one of them was in the back of the yards. You know, you know what the back of the yards is? I I know what the back of the yards <laughs> is, but if you could tell our listeners that don't know. So, yeah, in Chicago, we used to be uh, the biggest slaughterhouse for for different animals. And um, that's where it was. It was in the back of the yards. And they used to slaughter pigs. And there's horrific videos of of them doing that and the and the pig squealing. I don't want to bring this up too much because yeah, well, it really kind read of the, read the jungle if you want the details. Oof. Yeah, I I was going to say something, but I don't know where I was going to go with it, so I'm just going to leave it be. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I was there, there used to be this one place that I would have to go to, and I would have to drive around back, which was touching the um the stockyards, right? Yeah. And um, I would occasionally smell bacon there. Now, were there animals there or is that over by the time That's you were doing well this? well over. Okay. Well over like 15, 20 years. Okay. Yeah. And um, still to this day, if you go to that area and the weather is just right, you're going to smell that. These oh. kind, 
and man, bacon smells good. <laughs> but then you think about where did this bacon come from? And then it puts you in this, it's a really weird feeling to have where you're like, I love bacon, but these poor animals. Yeah. So I really believe that smells can can be held into the materials used to build these places. And maybe, maybe it's just hot enough or the wind's hitting just right where it lifts this smell into the air that you can smell from something in back in its day. That maybe there wasn't enough um, ventilation where the stuff got kept inside there. That smell. Wow, captured. it's the ghost of food. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is so That's great. That's the best ghost. <laughs> no, it's not, it's not a ghostly thing. It is a very physical thing. Like, think about this. Uh, have you ever been in a lunchroom where somebody just cooked fish? Well, yeah, but that's like just happened. Yeah, but what about if it was like an hour later? You can sometimes still smell that yeah, fish. Yeah, but like 50 years later? Yeah, well, the back of the yards. 20 years later? The back of the yards taught me this. You can smell bacon. Well, I guess I, that sounds a little bit more to me for that area that like the sun is baking it and there's fat or whatever that's still there that wasn't clean but like this is like inside this is this was outside yeah i know what your story was but the waverly hills is inside yeah well it's even more so then that it can carry this (laughs) i mean seriously this was baked into the into the neighborhood and it is a lovely but tragic smell, I want to say. <laughs> this is the best <laughs> thing we've ever talked about. <laughs> I like food, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you're not a big bacon I fan, don't eat though. bacon. Yeah, I don't eat pork. Yeah, so yeah. I guess that's, so. yeah. All right, do you want one more or are we running out of time? Because Do this I one... want one more? No, but will I, will I accept <laughs> one more? Yes. Okay. Yes. So we, we talked to, people talk about just feeling a presence at yes. Waverly Hills, right? Like I, as I got there, I felt creeped out. It just had a creepy feel to it, you know, all of that. So I actually read a really interesting source that referred to this as a creeper. Is that from Minecraft? Well, it, it sounds, I don't know, I don't play Minecraft, but yeah, it sounds good. Um, <laughs> so no, this, so here's what the, how they describe this. They say the creeper is a shadow spirit. And I say it's rarely seen at Waverly Hills, but but it is sometimes. And it carries an aura of doom felt by anyone that crosses its path. Yeah, this is Minecraft, I think. <laughs> <laughs> this dark entity crawls along the floor, even up the walls and on the ceiling. To spot a creeper at Waverly Hills is surely one of the most frightening encounters a person could have at the facility. That's because they never heard Baby Shark. <laughs> That is creepy. It is creepy. Uh, Many people believe the creeper to be an inhuman entity. So this is a malevolent malevolent being not of this earth. So the idea is basically, so we talked about shadow people, and the majority of the shadow people seen at Waverly Hills are ghosts of people, spirits, is what people think and what I think. But that sometimes a demon, malevolent spirit kind of gets in amongst those things. And that that is what brings that feeling to that place. That's what gives it that, takes it from being just like creepy place. We kind of feel some leftover energy of people that died here and takes it to that top 25 haunted, most haunted places thing, um, you know, is that there's, there's not just ghosts there, but there's these malevolent entities there as well. I... <laughs> I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm not willing to to hear things like this. Uh, I just, to me, it's like okay. The, <laughs> I mean, sixty three thousand people died in this spot. For you to feel a little doom and gloom in this spot, I don't know if that really is ghostly or if it's like a PTSD thing that you just pick up upon being in the place. Mm. Yeah, I. I don't know. Maybe maybe energies can be trapped in these kind of places that aren't ghosts, but maybe that maybe that's a feeling of dread. Maybe so many people felt this way. So many people were helpless and had to go through all these experiments. And maybe you just pick up upon that or maybe you just know that this is the 
this is what happened there. I mean, I'm sure they tell you, I'm sure you have some clue as to what happened in this spot before you see this stuff. And maybe that just sets the mood for you. And that is a mood of doom and gloom. Mm, interesting. I don't know. What are your thoughts, though? Do you believe that? I think it's possible that there yeah. is some sort of um, something there that like builds up those energies. I mean, uh, we've been doing some, we've, we've been researching stuff for, for a lot of months here and, and, you know, gone to some places. And yeah, there's like creepy energy that I felt at Bachelor's Grove and, um, you know, things out there. But this, it, people are so strong when they talk about this. I feel like I'm doing my closing argument. Okay. Should we, should we well, do the closing yeah, argument? Yeah, we should. But I just want to say one thing before we do a closing argument, though. Yeah. I invite any shadow people or any ghost or anything like that to come to me. Okay, let's not do this. Come to me and I I want to be a believer. I want to see this. So if you are out there I am not you okay to with podcasts, this. I hang out with you a lot. I don't want this. And you listen to I podcasts, do not invite please, you. Please, please come. <laughs> I revoke this invitation. <laughs> no, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove a point though. In our next episode, I'm going to tell you that nobody came to visit me and I invited this in. I did the one thing you're not supposed to do. I am open. I am completely open to the idea. So if this doom and gloom spirit thing is out there, please come visit me. I'll I'll even bake you some bread. I'm not okay with this. <laughs> well, I don't think anything bad's going to happen. Uh-huh. But if it does, you guys all know. And I went <laughs> out I went out doing research uh-huh. for you. Okay. Great. Yes. Great. Mm-hmm. All right, closing argument time. Okay, let's do this. So do you want to tell them what closing arguments are as I pull up my timer? Uh, yes, me too. Um, so uh, this is how ghostly works, right? We tell our uh, history and our ghost story, and then we debate the stories that uh, people tell. Um, and then now we're going to offer you each a one-minute closing argument, and then you guys get to go and vote on Facebook on what you think, what you believe. So this is our last ditch effort to get you to come to our side. Absolutely. And I am going to time Rebecca on my phone. I'm going to give her one minute. Okay. You ready? Yeah. All right, go. All right. So as I was saying a few minutes ago, I believe that Waverly Hills is haunted, not just because there are so many stories, such a variety of stories. I didn't even get to all of the stories, but just the fact that people are, are so strong about it and people that will tell you flat out, I was not a believer until I went to this place and I came out a believer. And we, uh, we've we had people tell us that. I've read people talk about that. There is just something about this place. I mean, it was on the show, Scariest Places on Earth, which, by the way, I loved. Um, and there's a reason for that. And I do believe that there is malevolency there. I do believe there are shadows and ghosts of people that died there and spirits um, of children and nurses and doctors and patients. And this place has just had a lot of, of misery in it. Um, I don't, you know, and, and, and bad medical experiments and it just attracts all of this. Oh, that's it for you. Okay. There you go. All right. right, Are you ready? Did you have any last thing to say about that? Okay. Didn't want to stop you. No, in, no. If you were in the midst of coming to some conclusion or no, something. No, I'm good. I feel like I got it in, I got it in All there. All right. I am ready whenever you are. Okay. And go. Waverly Hills is owned by two paranormal investigators. I believe that them owning this means that they want to make money based upon this place. They bought this place for this. They have tours at night. They set it up to be the most spookiest place. But what about if we take the veil off of this place? And what about if we were to walk this dimly lit area during the day? Would we see the same stuff? They say that there's toys all around the place. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they clean that up? Why wouldn't they pick up the toys? Because they want you to believe. They want to sell you this story. That's what you're paying your $20 for, is to have this story to be able to tell people. I believe Waverly Hills is just a normal spot, just has a creepy history. Done. 
All right, you just made it. Good job. I always just make it. <laughs> so I want to thank you all so much for listening to our Waverly Hills episode. Waverly Hills, that's not where you want to be. Thank you, Mondo. <laughs> <laughs> on our next episode, it will be coming out on June 12th, which is my birthday. Yay! So for my birthday, I asked for a special present from Rebecca. I ask that we do the best episode that we have ever done. I am so excited about this about episode. About the most scariest, scariest idea ever. And that is the movie Poltergeist. Mm. There has been a known presence around this movie that has caused death. It has caused people to retire early. Yeah. It is... It's an amazing story. It really is. Um, and it one of my favorite movies of all time. Yes. So and this just... is probably what got me interested in the idea of paranormal investigation. Yeah, absolutely. Because there's so much. Was Poltergeist. Yeah. I mean, that movie was so creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So that will be our next episode. It will come out on June 12th. We have so many other... So many other episodes in store for you. We were just talking about one yesterday. I can't give it away because we do it right before we're, we're going to come out with it. But this is going to be an amazing time mm -hmm. for Ghostly. Also, we are talking about, and this is in the talking stages right now. We, we haven't solidified anything, but all of October, we're talking about putting out an episode every week. Yeah, no, I, we're going to, man. We're we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this, yeah. But we get we're gonna culminate. The culminating episode is the one that is I'm the most excited about. Which again, we're not yes. gonna reveal yet. But oh my lord, it'll yeah. all be on the same topic, though I believe. Yeah. Y yes. Yes. Oh god. I mean, like it's the best topic. It's so exciting. Yeah, it yeah. is definitely. Um. Oh, hey, can I mention uh our review just in case if there's anyone that didn't listen to yeah. our last ep uh, our bonus episode? Yes. Um, we got a review in a magazine. In a magazine. Yeah. Their first. It was their first ever um uh, uh, edition their and debut. They, their debut, and they 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 did not contact. Uh, I mean they. They, well, contacted, they, contact they us. contacted us, but I mean, like, they, we didn't contact them. That's, I guess, what I want to say is they found us and decided to pick us as their first podcast to review because they have a whole podcast section. Um, the magazine is called Terror Connection. And um, if you're looking for something to keep you awake on dark and stormy nights, um, you should definitely check out Terror Connection. Um, horror is all around you is their tagline, which I love. And their first issue is all about nightmares. So they mm. have, um, they talk about uh, some real stories that people tell about themselves and their nightmares. But and they also. Nightmare on Elm Street. And they talk so much about Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh. About old Nightmare on Elm Street, about the new one that one, they're filming two, that's coming Freddy's out. Coming for oh my God, you. Pat and I love this movie so much. Three, four, <laughs> better lock your, your door. door. Yeah. <laughs> Waverly Hills. <laughs> that's know. not where hmm. you want to be. Oh no, he has a new toy. <laughs> um, you can read Terror Connection for free on issue.com. What, how do you, I S S U U dot com. I yeah. I S S U U. Okay. And it's a uh, yeah. You can read it for free on there. Um, they also have a Twitter, Instagram, what? Face Chat, well, on, it's or Facebook, free? Snapchat. Yeah, it's free. What? Yeah, you can just read it. Oh my! God, I'm gonna go read it right now. Yeah, it's really. I've already they, read it. Actually. Yeah. Well, they they did a really good job. They and, did, and it was really nice of them to review us. It just yes. makes you feel a little legit, you know. Too legit. <laughs> to quit. Hi hi. All right, so that has been our Waverly Hills episode. I will not play Mondo's <laughs> <laughs> Mondo's singing again. Oh, you will. I, I know you, but mm -hmm. at least not right now. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I do want to say one more thing is we have to record the next episode of Ghostly Early, our Poltergeist episode, because we will be in Orlando um, when, like, right before the episode comes out, so we might not have accurate poll information. In well, the so next yeah, yeah, get your votes in early if you could, uh, yes. and and uh, we may, if we can, we'll try to do a little ghost hunting while we're down there. Absolutely, but just so you know, the polls might not be out in time for us to be able to use that in our recording. Yeah, well, yeah, maybe we'll have to add it. Maybe. All right. So until the next time, stay ghostly. Bye. <laughs>